Welcome to The Great Debate, where today we are talking about the anime genres that may be poised for a comeback. Genres come and go, right? You get some genres that are really big in the 70s and then just kind of fade away. Let's talk about that a little bit. What are the genres that uh, were big in the past and maybe have faded away? And what are some of the big ones right now that maybe... Maybe it's, it's time for them to move on. Certainly in the 70s, you got all sorts of um, sports anime, big in the 70s. Super Robot was big in the 70s as well. I think sports anime is one of those genres that has never really died out. Um, it's just kind of found a new level where there's always some sports anime being, you know, being done. So that's there. Um, Super Robot certainly... Um, is not as big as it was in the 70s because Real Robot took over in the 80s and dominated that, uh, that decade. The 80s also saw the real rise of the, uh, the sitcom, for lack of a better term, the, the really goofy sort of Ranma-style sitcom where you had this very odd situation for the characters um, but it wasn't just, you know, a 13-episode comedy. It was these long, long, long um, comedies. And that seems to have gone away as well, which is kind of interesting. The, the anime sitcom. The 90s saw all sorts of stuff. Saw a lot of sci-fi in the 90s, certainly. Um, a resurgence, uh, not, not resurgence, surgence of fantasy in the 90s as well. Um, but I would say 90s were, the late 80s, early 90s were big for sci-fi. Yeah, Maison Koku, great example of a, um, 80s comedy where there's romance in there, but it's, 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 uh, relatively minimal compared to the comedy. Um, well, I guess they're, they're more, they're, they're, there's a lot of romance in Maison Koku, but still, point being. Um... And the 2000s were certainly dominated by high school harem series, slice of life harem shows. I don't think there's any other real genre that dominated that, right? Well, right, Bruno. What I'm saying is that there's certainly well, there's certainly comedic anime series, but not comedic anime franchises like there were back then, where there were multiple Ranma series. Right, Mezu no Koku went on for dozens and dozens of episodes. And that doesn't seem like a genre that, that is, that, you know, that seems like a thing where you get them, but they're, they're little things. We, we, we don't have the long form, I guess. Anime comedy is what I'm talking about that. Yeah, Love Hina, that, that, that's what I'm talking about as opposed to the short uh, sitcoms, if you will. So I wonder if that's, I mean, granted, we don't really get much of any anime that is long form anymore. Uh, it's just hard to have that happen. Hard to keep that going in the modern anime industry and with the anime fandom. Folks just want to move on to the next thing. Although we do see certain long-form franchises. Certainly the idol anime franchise concept has been a big thing over the past couple of... I would say the past decade or so. Where there's plenty of these long-form idol franchises that they keep on doing. Um, so that's more of a new genre. Maybe you could do a long-form comedy series, who knows. Um, <clears throat> several people in the chat room suggest Mecca. Time for a Mecca uh, comeback. Now the question is, is it time, I mean, would we see a super robot comeback or a real robot comeback? Is that, you know, is, it, is it time for a super robot return? Super robot is generally aimed more at children. Um, it's more fun and over the top, and joyous, right? It can be dark, but the darkness is definitely a spice as opposed to a common, constant thing in Super Robot. Um, is it time for that, or is it time to be dark? Is it time to be serious, gritty, the way Real Robot tends to be? I'm not sure. I'm certainly seeing a bit of a move away from completely happy, goofy, um, you know, light high school romances as the norm. Hey, Master Chief. Obviously, there are there are light comedies out there, but it doesn't seem to be a, as big of a thing. Um, so this, we we are getting more of a trend towards more serious stuff. You know, Darling in the Franks 
is a more serious super robot show, maybe that's what's going to happen. Maybe we're going to see a melding of super robot and real robot where we have kind of the the darkness and the grittiness of real of real robot merged with the over the top action of super robot in shows like Darling and the Franks, which is also not unlike the the um uh uh, the, the the overall tone of Gurren Lagann, which was very much that. We're going to do Super Robot, but we're going to go a little darker and, and more gritty with that. So that's possible. That would be interesting, really, actually. Um, one of the advantages of Super Robot is it really takes advantage of the, the anime medium, where the robots don't have to be realistic. They can be ridiculous, and that would be fun. Oh, interesting. The near-future sci-fi. That's a good point, Game Escape. We don't have much of that. Um, we don't really get a lot of of that. Yeah, that kind of cyberpunk-ish anime. Part of the problem is that cyberpunk. You know, it's hard to make cyberpunk today. We don't have a a, a clear grip on near future technology because it changes so fast. We just we just you know, don't know what that will look like, and it, 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 it's very difficult for that to coalesce into a, um, into a subgenre, right? Um, classical looking fantasy compared to light novel stuff. So, Bruno, could you break that down a little, a little bit? Because I'm not sure um, how I would differentiate between those two, and what, what, would, what would examples of those uh, two things be? Yeah, space opera. Space opera was more, I don't know, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, about how much space opera was a genre, a significantly sized genre for anime at any point. I can't really think of a time when there were a lot of space opera series came, coming out. You know, you had Legend of Galactic Heroes, you had, um, you know, a few other things here and there. Crusher Joe, maybe, depending how you count space opera. But there's just not a lot of, like, of straight-up space opera I can point to. Um, and I always assumed that the you know, space opera was probably big in the '80s, early '90s, but I just it, it I don't know. Maybe I should go back and dig into some of the online lists. Because um, part of the problem is, like to me, space opera does not mean space you know, sci-fi action, right? That's sci-fi action. Space opera needs to feel operatic. It needs to feel epic. Um, I would say, for example, Captain Harlock is a space opera. Because it has big operatic emotions, big operatic stories. Um, Galaxy Express 39s, I don't think, is space opera because it is all disconnected stories, right? It's Twilight Zone in space. Um, it's certainly in that mood, and a lot of the Leiji Matsumoto series are space operatic. Um, Edo era anime. I, yeah, I would totally be up for more. Historical anime. I'd love to see more historical anime, period. You know, Warring States, period. Edo, period. Um, I'd love to see more stuff in early 20th century Japan. You know, what was it like in Japan in, in the 19-teens and 1920s? Right? Quest of the Stars, anime space opera. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but from what I've seen, absolutely space opera. That's the thing, Bruno, is to me, the fantasy of the 80s and 90s all look the same, too. You know, they all look like Lotus War. Pretty much. Because they were all pretty much copying Lotus War. So I, 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 I'm not seeing that... And again, I'm, I'm, I'm not that familiar with fantasy anime... But it, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with a lot of wildly different art styles for fantasy anime back in, in that period. Which is certainly different than what it looks like today. But horror. Horror. Huh. I think it's another one, a good, good example of a genre that, that's never really big, been huge on its own, but could definitely be poised for a big upswing. Um, like in the 80s over here, we had all the, the teen horror uh, series. Yeah, that could certainly be. It'll depend on if Japan is in the right psychological mood for horror. Certainly there's a lot of horror um, out there. 
Uh, interestingly, Japanese live action horror seems to have hit a a bit of a lull where there's there's a lot of it out there, but it's not as big as it was back with the ring stuff stuff, stuff, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, horror could certainly make a again not, not sort of a comeback, but a a big upswing. Hmm. I mean, science fiction, general science fiction anime, and maybe even, like, near-future science fiction anime might actually be a good one, given SpaceX and given some of the other things, you know, NASA planning to build a, 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 a space station around the moon. Um, I think that's a significant possibility where you could really jump into those, uh, into, into stories set in that, you know, couple decades in the future thing. <clears throat> Ever been a Yakuza anime? Well, there was the uh, the adaptation of um, oh gosh um, the Toshiro Mifune film um, okay, one second One second. Um, Yojimbo. There was an anime adaptation of Yojimbo called Kaze no Yojimbo, or The Wind of the Yojimbo, uh, which sounds very scatological, but it's not. Um, and it's basically a modern adaptation of Yojimbo where this guy sort of sweeps into this uh, sort of small town in Japan uh, and actually does, uh, you know, gets involved with the a sort of a crime syndicate that more or less runs the town and all that kind of stuff. You're right, Hell Girl finishes fourth season, so there's certainly big horror out there. Um, but I'm trying to think of other Yakuza focused anime series. I can't think of any, which could be one of those things where we don't want to piss off those guys. Um, I seem to think... Oh, and of course there's the, the Yakuza in um, Tokyo Godfathers, but that's just a side plot. Interesting. Black Lagoon, probably. Yep. Almost certainly. Um, oh, um, well, that's not Yakuza. I mean, you have... Uh, Bacano, but that's about the American actual mafia. Huh. That's interesting. Um, yeah, Kazuno Yojimbo was interesting in that it was about kind of small crime, prostitution, things like that, in a, in a relatively small town, uh, modern day. Um, but it was it was very dull. <laughs> you know? It just nothing was happening. Um, it's it's really hard to tell the Yojimbo story. You know, a uh, guy sweeps into town and uh, gets involved in lots of different factions and plays them off each other um, without being boring. It's just, it is a very slow burn kind of a story. That's a Yakuza and Akagi. Okay, interesting. Hmm. It's weird. Yeah, I'm, all, all I can think of is live action series. Maybe that would be a thing. I mean, I would love to see more crime stories in anime. We certainly don't see a lot of detective shows. In anime. There's often, you know, mystery stories, stuff where there's some something that has to be dealt with, but not so much Yakuza uh, crime stories. Huh. Maybe it's time for that. Who knows? I mean, part of the problem is that it's, um, there don't seem to be a lot of crime stories in general in Japan. That's just one of those things that just is not a, a, a popular genre for, for media. You, you get a, f a few every year, you know, an, an occasional movie or TV series kind of a thing, but not a, not a, not a, doesn't seem to be a really big thing. But and then again, I may not be, um, you know, I'm speaking very much from somebody who is not seeped in <laughs> what's coming out in Japanese cinemas um, all the time. Um, so there may be more than I'm aware of. Interesting. Um, Angel Heart, Crime. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not, yeah, Marion, I'm not sure the West is ready for Mecca. I, I'm, I mean, yes, we have more mecha things, but I don't know that the West is ready to support, like, a mecha series. Maybe a movie. Um, uh, um, part of the problem is, of course, just anime in general. I don't think the, the West is ready to, to, to... The West is not going to flock to an 
an anime Gundam movie. We're just not ready for the animation yet. Um, let's see here. <laughs> um, animated love stories. That'd be interesting. Sanctuary. Oh, two episode OVA. Fair enough. Yeah, the Yakuza are a, you know, quasi-legal organization in Japan, so it's kind of complicated. I don't know that I want a live-action Gundam movie, to be honest. I don't, I don't know that Gundam would work live-action. Um, I'm a huge Gundam fan, too. I, just, I don't think that's a thing that's ever going to be you know, mainstream in, in, in America. I, I think it's, it's that's, and, and that is not because I think that uh, the Americans are dumb or anything. I think it is just too foreign. It is just too, um, you know, it, it, it is jumping through too many hoops in terms of animation, story concept. The, the Chief Gundam Officer talked about this. That it, is, it is hard to pitch to Western audiences the concept of a war story where the main character hates fighting in the war the entire time. You know, and there's nothing gung ho. There's nothing you know about that. It's just, it's a it's a really um, um, uh, it's it's a complicated approach to a war story um, to pitch to pe people. Plus the anime, plus everything else. Pacific Rim was bad. There was nothing bad about Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim was amazing. Pacific Rim was fantastic. In my opinion. You're absolutely right, Matt. I think one of the problems with Mecha is just impractic impracticability. Like, you, you do have to come up... You have to realize the fact that... You know... These things are not practical. Um, that's... You know what, Derp? That, you bring up something interesting. The World Masterpiece Theater shows. I'm actually kind of surprised that we don't have that anymore. For those not familiar, World Masterpiece Theater was a it was a yearly adaptation of a children's novel, typically or novel series, into a, a sorry a fifty episode anime series. So Anne of Green Gables will get a fifty episode anime series, and so forth and so on. Um, the um, and so you just got all of these children's films, you know, um, Heidi and all that stuff, and it was always, as far as I know, it was always successful. Now, granted, this was a different time, you know, 70s and 80s, into the 90s. But it seems to me like that's an easy sell. You know, it aims straight at kids. You get um, a lot of material. You can tell, you know, a variety of stories. There's all sorts of kids' stories to tell. I'm sure they did not, you know, um, go through every kid's story ever written. And I just wonder why that died out. It seems like something you just keep on doing all the time. And I'm sure it's one of those things where they were, you know, Shogaku Khan or some publisher was the main publisher and they were like, well, you know, we're focusing on different things. This doesn't make sense for us right now. And there was no other, you know, financier ready to step in. Um, so, yeah. Um... Master Chief brings up an interesting question as to whether otaku anime are going to become a thing. Are they going to see a bunch of, of shows about otaku? I can see that happening. I can see otaku as protagonists as a, a major thing. Um, I mean, there's... That, that would be catering straight to the fans, and that is something that we would all understand, Right? Doing the, the Genshiken, even welcome to the NHK is, I mean, he's not an otaku, but it's, it's catering to those sorts of experiences. But definitely Genshiken, those sorts of shows, I think that, that might be a, a genre that's, that, uh, that would, would appeal a lot to fans. Although, I mean, you see uh, things like the anime adaptation of Akiba Strip never really went anywhere. Um, so I don't know if that's really something that makes sense. Um, financially, who knows? I mean, that would certainly kind of uh, square the circle. 
where we get anime to otaku that are about otaku. I don't know. We'll see. So yeah, so that's interesting. So I think, I don't know. I think, I agree that Mecha feels like it's poised for some kind of resurgence, but in a different form. Like I said, I can see a super robot and real robot melding. Um, I can see... And I know we've had enough comedy. I don't see a huge comedic thing. I can see near future science fiction. Maybe. Outbreak Company and Gate. Yep. Definitely no talk about leads. And it doesn't seem like either of those, like, exploded. None of those really... They, like, they, they had their fans, but didn't really turn into huge franchises. Post-apocalyptic. Interesting Van Riley. Hmm. Anime would certainly do post-apocalyptic very well. Because you have over-the-top action sequences, um, you have people wearing the same clothes every time, so it's easy to animate. Uh, it's actually kind of surprising. Why don't we see... I mean, we saw a lot of post-apocalyptic anime in the 80s. Um, maybe that is... That would be a reasonable thing, especially with the popularity of zombies. You know, seeing that come in. Yeah, if it's at the North Star, absolutely. Um, seeing more... more post-apocalyptic, zombie survival, horror kind of stories... That would work. Huh. That's interesting. That is really interesting. That would totally make sense. It also depends on how the Japanese economy does, on how well, you know, the, on what the Japanese feel like, right, in terms of just what the mood is. That often determines what is popular or not, whoever knows. Yeah, superhero anime was a, a fad, pretty much. It seems. Such is life. All right, I think I covered this pretty darn well. That's some interesting thoughts. Thank you all very much. And um, we'll be back next week with another topic, but uh, that's some interesting stuff. So I'll stick around here for a little while, and uh, the rest of you watching on YouTube, see you next time.